Today, President Biden addressed the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in California following his meeting yesterday with Chinese President Xi Jinping. The White House is touting a number of concrete deliverables from that meeting, including a new deal on restricting the flow of fentanyl and its precursor chemicals, the resumption of military-to-military -military communications between Washington and Beijing, which had been suspended, and even, perhaps most crucially, progress on a deal to bring new pandas to America's zoos. But of course, the summit takes place against the backdrop of the ongoing war and humanitarian crisis in Gaza, which the president was once again faced questions over during a press conference last night. John Kirby serves as deputy assistant to the president, as well as coordinator for strategic communications at the National Security Council. And he joins me now. It's great to have you in the program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Good to be with you. I want to start with, with that uh, a claim the president made last night uh, during that press conference. We played it earlier in which he said that Hamas had hidden a headquarters underneath the hospital. Obviously, that's a, 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 a contested claim, an intensely contested claim, and a high stakes one because it uh, gets to whether that's a legitimate military target. And I wonder, since it is such an important and contested claim, if we can expect some proof will be furnished by American or Israeli officials. Well, the Israelis have already, as you've seen, and I think you just uh, went through before the commercial break, talking about how they have made public the, their findings in the hospital. Um, I can't speak to specific intelligence uh, other than to say that based on our own intelligence assessment, uh, on our own collection and analysis of, uh, of what we've seen, we believe that it isn't true. It is true that the, a command and control node uh, was underneath that hospital and that Hamas has used that hospital not only for storage of weapons, but also uh, to, to house some of their fighters. So we have, uh, we have no doubt in our mind, uh, just from our own intelligence analysis, uh, that Hamas was using that hospital. And that look, that's, a, that's out of their playbook. This is what they do. They, they find ways to headquarter themselves uh, in civilian infrastructure, digging tunnels under homes, placing innocent civilians in the crossfire between them and the IDF. Just to follow up on that, I mean, obviously, sometimes intelligence could be wrong. I mean, uh, notably, I remember covering, of course, the uh, strike after the, the brutal suicide bombing outside the Bagram, uh, outside the, the Kabul air base, uh, in which uh, someone who the U.S. intelligence believed was uh, an ISIS fighter was actually just an innocent civilian happened. Um, it, it does seem important, I think, just for global public opinion, particularly, um, that, 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 that people yeah. do get furnished some sort of tangible proof. I mean, independent of whether, you know, the U.S. government believes it, the Israeli government, there is quite a bit of global right. public attention being paid to this conflict, and particularly the plight of the folks that were in that hospital. Yeah, there, there is indeed. You're absolutely right about that. And as I said, the Israeli Defense Forces, this is their operation. Uh, and uh, while they're on the ground, they have been releasing imagery. They have been taking camera crews in there and showing uh, the things that they've been finding. Again, it perfectly corroborates our own intelligence. Uh, I don't have anything to announce tonight in terms of the release of any particular U.S. intelligence. I can just, again, assert that our own analysis uh, corroborates the claim that Hamas was using this as a command and control node. And again, I would remind, this is a common tactic for them. This is a page out of their playbook. They're deliberately placing patients and hospital staff uh, at greater risk. And I want to ask one more question on this, and particularly in hospitals, but it, but it applies to the, the, the broader contours of the conflict. Um, as you've said, and as Israeli officials have said, there are tunnels underneath Gaza, that there are civilian uh, infrastructure that's been utilized for Hamas fighters. There's videos the IDF has released, uh, you know, from schools where they say they found uh, r rocket launch sites. I want to play this clip because it's gotten a lot of attention about the targeting of civilian structures, and it's by Anthony Blinken, and he's talking about the Russians in Ukraine. And you've probably seen this. It's been circulating a lot on social media where he's condemning the targeting of that civilian infrastructure. Please uh, take, take a look. Bombing schools and hospitals and apartment buildings to rubble is not normal. Stealing Ukrainian children from their families and giving them to people in Russia is not normal. We must not let President Putin's callous indifference to human life become our own. I guess the question becomes if, if, if there is Hamas uh, military infrastructure embedded in civilian infrastructure, whether the U.S. has communicated to Israel what lengths they have to go to or what the lines are for what would make a, a piece of civilian infrastructure a legitimate military target. 
And I don't think there's a single conversation that we're having with our Israeli counterparts where we don't talk about and urge them to be as cautious and deliberate as care and careful as they can with respect to civilian infrastructure and, of course, civilian lives. Uh, urban warfare is difficult, and we have experience at this uh, in our, uh, of our own in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we have shared our perspectives and our lessons learned, uh, and we urge them, again, to be as deliberate and careful as they can. Uh, I want to make two points here, though. One, Every civ civilian killed, every civilian wounded, that's a tragedy. And we know there's a whole family that's grieving as a result. And now there are many, many thousands of families that are grieving and hurting right now. Uh, and we want all that suffering to, s to stop. That's why we're going to continue to talk to our Israeli counterparts about being careful and being deliberate in their, their targeting. The second point I want to make is, uh, unlike the fight in Ukraine, where the, the destruction of civilian infrastructure and the taking of civilian lives is actually a war yeah. aim of President Putin. Uh, he wants to wipe out Ukraine's culture, history, and not, not just to mention their country. Uh, that is also a war aim of Hamas. Uh, that is what they did on October 7th, paragliding into a music festival and slaughtering innocent people in front of their family members. They, they want to wipe Israel, Israel off the map. It is not a war aim of the Israeli Defense Forces to kill innocent civilians and to destroy civilian infrastructure. They are going about this uh, in a very aggressive way, and we are talking to them again about the way they do it. But it's important to remember the distinction here. Hamas is actually committing war crimes by ha headquartering in hospitals. The Israeli Defense Forces uh, are not making it a war aim to kill innocent people. Let me ask you a question on, on China, since that was uh, the subject that was a huge news yesterday. And just about for folks, we talked to John Brennan yesterday that, that don't understand what military to military communications mean and particularly what normalizing them means and what their significance is. Why is that significant that yeah. those have been restored after being suspended? Uh, man, it's a big deal. I mean, uh, uh, to, to not have the two of the most powerful militaries on the face of the planet in, in the most consequential bilateral relationship in the world, having aircraft operating in, in, in proximity, ships operating in proximity, and not have an ability to pick up the phone and, and call somebody on the other side and explain what you're doing and why you're doing it and try to deconflict, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a real dangerous precedent. And the president uh, said that very clearly yesterday. I mean, it, it could get it could get in, into big trouble very, very quickly. And so those communications have been shut down since uh, Speaker Pelosi's visit to, uh, to, to Taiwan. And we're obviously glad now that that process is ongoing. And the thing about this, Chris, is it, it goes from the commander in chief down to a lower level. And that's really important, too, because it can't ev not every potential conflict or every potential sure. uh, operation should go all the way to the leader level. So down at the theater command level and even lower now, our two, our two militaries are going to be able to communicate uh, that's a good thing for, for, uh, for stability and security in the Indo-Pacific. All right. John Kirby, national spokesman, national security spokesman for the White House. I really appreciate you taking time. Come back anytime.